welcome to this tutorial on the last and most inferior segment of our spine or our freely articulating spine called our lumbar spine and I mean most inferior as in the lowest not poorest in quality by any means now let's start with our directional terminology we have a superior view of a lumbar vertebrae here and a lateral view and also a lateral segment of our lumbar spine. If we have a look as well, we'll see that we've got the ventral and dorsal segments, so the front and the back. Front being ventral, dorsal being the posterior or the back. Now our lumbar spine is made up of five individual vertebrae that are freely articulating with each other, and they are the L1 to L5 vertebrae that I've just highlighted here in red. The first thing we can notice straight away about our lumbar vertebrae is that they lack costal facets. The costal facets being the point on the thoracic vertebrae that we are allowed to interact with our ribs. Our lumbar spine doesn't need to interact with our ribs because there are no ribs down there, so it doesn't have that feature. And they are also the highest weight-bearing vertebrae, so that results in them being the largest and the thickest. So, by far, the thickest bone in our vertebrae. And just while we're talking about the uh, weight-bearing capacity of the lumbar spine, I'll point out the body. Now, the body of the lumbar vertebrae here, we can see is very large and somewhat are kidney-shaped as well. So, if we were to uh, compare the bodies of the uh, lumbar vertebrae along with the thoracic and cervical, we'd see that the lumbar is by far the biggest. The next feature we're going to see is the vertebral foramen. Now the vertebral foramen in our lumbar spine is somewhat triangular in shape, and that is because of the concave shape of our lumbar spine. Now if we remember, we go concave, convex, and then concave again, due to that uh, curvature of our spine. So cervical concave, thoracic convex, and then lumbar concave again, as I've just outlined here. And one more important thing to note that the reason we have this vertebral foramen is so that we can uh, pass our spinal cord through that space. So our spinal cord is going to go through here, as I've just uh, drawn up on the screen here in yellow. And the next feature we're going to see on our lumbar spine are the spinous processes. Now the spinous process of our cervical and thoracic spine were a lot longer and pointed. The spinous process of our lumbar region is short and flat and somewhat hatchet shaped. So this hatchet shape here almost looks like the head of an axe. And the reason these spinous processes are much larger is they have a lot more stress placed on them by the tendons that are attaching to there from our large uh, back muscles. So our large back muscles are attaching onto the back of those spinous processes, so they need to be uh, flat, uh, that hatchet shape, and very strong. The next feature we'll see at the anterior portion of that spinous process are the superior and inferior articular processes. Now the superior and inferior articular processes are the points in which our lumbar spine will articulate with the previous and the uh, next vertebrae in that column. So I'm just showing where those articular processes are here, the superior and inferior, so top and bottom. And like I just said, they're going to articulate with the previous vertebrae in the column at the superior side, and they'll articulate with the next vertebrae in the column on that inferior surface. So if we see here, these articular processes are forming joints between our lumbar vertebrae. Now one of the last features we'll see on our lumbar spine is the transverse process. The transverse process we can see sticking out laterally here in the purple, and it's going to be a point of ligament and tendon attachment. So we have these uh, sticking out on each of our lumbar vertebrae, 
so that we can attach tendon and ligament. And like we also saw on all of the other segments of our spine, we have the inferior notch. The inferior notch being this large uh, depression created here. And it's going to be a depression that creates a foramen so that we can get our, our spinal nerves through that space. And I'll show that up on the spine here as well. So from our spinal cord, we have our spinal nerves branching off and that inferior notch helps to create space for that to happen. And that covers all of the basic features of our lumbar spine. If you've been watching all of the videos, we've covered our cervical, thoracic and lumbar now, so we should know everything there is to know about the spine. I hope this video has been helpful to you and as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.